Hey guys, this is JJ with the Express Workshops. This week I want to show some quick and easy ways to create vignettes inside of Photoshop. Okay, let's get started with this project. Um, as you can see on this photograph, um, it, it really is a, it's a fine enough photograph, but um, just like with almost every photograph that I actually retouch or finish, um, I want to make sure that my subject is the really the spotlight of what's going on in the photograph. So with this photograph, you can see that the sky back here is a light color. Uh, this is there's a little bit of his legs show in here and it's just a lot of information in here that is okay for the composition of the photograph but I want to make sure that you understand that this area right here is what I'm actually wanting you to see and that's what a vignette does and uh, there's several different ways of doing vignettes but you know what I I don't like to spend a lot of time on it it's one of those things where it needs to be extremely subtle there is a big difference between a border in a photograph and a vignette and you'll see what I'm talking about here in a bit but let's go ahead and get started and um, I'll just demonstrate one of the quickest and easiest ways that I do a vignette and I'll do a couple different um, uh, techniques in, in doing a vignette but this one's probably going to be the simplest uh, what I'm going to do is first of all I'm going to go ahead and above this layer this background layer I'm going to go ahead and just make a uh, blank layer all right Click on there, I got my blank layer. I don't have to call it anything. This will be a really short project, so I won't worry with it. And I do want to fill it with black. Um, and my foreground color here is black. So I'll go ahead and Alt Backspace to fill that with my foreground color. And then I'll go up here to my elliptical marquee tool for this one. And I'll just click and drag out an ellipse here. And if you hold the space bar, you can move this ellipse around, this selection around. And I know that his head was probably a little more off center than that. So I'm going to move that there and kind of move it to about that shape. Now that's my selection. I'm going to go ahead and refine that selection. And I just want to make it real soft. So I'm going to make this feather pretty darn good. Probably like that. Now, usually I'll go in here and I'll use this output panel, but in this case, all I need to do is just make sure that that's a nice, soft, feathered edge. So I won't do anything with the selection. I'll just have it output to selection. And I'll say, okay. All right. And then basically all I need to do is on my keyboard is just go ahead, make sure that I'm on the, the top layer, but on my keyboard, just go ahead and um, choose delete. All right. So that gives me basically that vignette look. All right, I will need to do one more thing. I want to control D to get rid of my selection. All right, and then a lot of people, I, I find this, now maybe it's just taste, maybe it's a mistake, I'm not sure what it is, but a lot of people say, okay, I'm done, that looks good. Well, that's a little bit, well, it's a lot heavy handed. So basically what I do once I get a vignette like this is that I'll go to this top layer and then in my layers uh, panel here, I'll go the opacity and I'll click and scrub that all the way to zero. And then I'll click again and I'll just ease it up. Now I find that most of the time, if I get too much above, depending on how light that is, if I get too much above 25%, I think it's a little heavy handed because like I said, you're not putting a border on here. You're actually just trying to focus the light uh, in one area. The lightest uh, parts of a photograph are going to be um, what your eye is going to be drawn to. So these edges don't mean a whole bunch. There's not a lot of information here. It's just this area right here that I want to make stick out. So this is the area that I want to uh, make sure we'll do it. Now I'm going to turn that off and on so you can see the subtle difference here. That's with it off. And that's with it on. See, just a little bit of a vignette in there. Just enough to pay attention to the subject. All right, so let's do it one more, a couple more ways. I'm going to go ahead and get another one. This is just a landscape. Now, the reason why I want to do this one different is because I'm going to use a different selection tool. Everything else will, will be exactly the same. Maybe I'll make a, uh, a different way of making the selection. But 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'll go ahead to um, my layers palette and make a new layer. I'm going to fill that with black again. I'm going to go ahead and use the rectangular marquee tool. And I'll make it about that big. And I'll refine my edge here. Do the same thing. I'm going to feather it. And I'll feather it pretty good. Eh, maybe not so much. All right, right there. Same thing. I'll just go OK. And this time, instead of just pushing delete on the keyboard, I'm going to go ahead and create a layer mask with that. And uh, I'll, I'll do a layer mask because I can go back in and easily refine it if I need to. Now, in this case, I won't need to, but this is just another way of doing it. So on my keyboard, I'll hold Alt and then I'll go down here to my uh, layer mask. And when I click it, then it cuts out just like we did with the delete, but it also gives me a layer mask here. Now that means I can, I can modify that again if I needed to. All right, just like the other one, I'll go ahead and go down to zero and then I'll just bump it up just enough. Now I'm only at 14% there because I think that's what this needs. But you can see that this inside edge is what we're focusing on and not the edges that are out here. So I'll turn that one off and on. You can take a look at that. Just real subtle. I just don't like to get in the habit. Now here I'll turn this one up. I see a lot of this and I just think that just looks a little bit too fake. So I don't like to, to do that. I just have a little bit of, wait a minute, I take it all the way down and then I bring it up to taste. That's kind of how I adjust it. All right, that might be a little bit too much. Okay, right there is good. So you can see that that's the before, that's the after. Just a little bit of focusing on there. Do the same thing with studio lighting. You'll, you know, you'll just light one area and uh, not light another area to give that area interest. All right, let's do one more. And here's a photograph here of myself and my wife. Look at that, it's kind of beautiful. Anyway, um, I'll go ahead and do the same thing as I did before. I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to fill that with black again. And I'm going to do what I did the last time with the um, rectangle marquee tool because it's the same shape. I'm going to use my space bar here to move this around a little bit. Got it. I'm going to go ahead and refine the edge the same way as I did before. And about like that. I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing as I did with the last one. I'm going to hold Alt and then I'll go ahead and pick my layer mask. All right, I'm going to go ahead and adjust that down and just bring that in. I think that that's good. Let's look at the before and after here. Yeah, just a little bit on those edges. Okay, now this particular photograph, there was a lot of light here in the background. Now, over here by our heads, I think that's okay. It's not real distracting because it kind of uh, contrasts between where we are here in the shade and that background. So I think that's okay. But I think this light area over here is a little bit distracting. So the reason why I want to show you how to do this is because there might be just an area like this that you want to just kind of, oh, kind of uh, dim down a little bit without having to do just a marquee uh, tool with a rectangle or an ellipse. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing as I did before, but on top of this other layer, I'll go ahead and get another new layer. I'm going to fill it with black, Alt Backspace. Now this time, I'm going to go ahead and choose the gradient tool. Now if you don't see the gradient tool out, it's probably because you have the bucket, the paint bucket tool here. So if it's there, you can click and hold and you'll get the gradient tool here. All right. Now the only other thing that you might want to do is go here to the top and this first one is black to white, foreground to background, whatever you've got there. But this second one is foreground to transparent and that's the one I want. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that because that way I can just let it fade off and I can adjust it as I go along. So 
I know that that area was right around here that I wanted to actually be able to uh, get rid of. So I'm gonna go ahead on this top layer, go ahead and add a layer mask. Now I'm not gonna use the Alt here or anything, I'm just gonna use a layer mask. And then with that gradient tool, I'm gonna click right about here, I'm just kind of guessing, and go to the corner. There you go. So you can see I got rid of that area. Now, of course, that's way too dark. But again, since I'm on my own layer, I can click on the opacity here, take it down to zero, and then just kind of bring it in just a little bit to tame that corner down. So let's look at that before and after. Just a subtle difference so that you can see that it, all of the real light goes right to your subjects over here. All right, that's it for this video. And um, if you have any questions, like any time, just leave a comment down uh, below and I'll see if I can answer those for you. Um, be sure to subscribe, be sure to like my video, and I will see you next time. Thanks a lot.